So in question 1132, we're asked to supply the reagents or conditions that are going to transform starting material into the product. So the strategy that we want to use for this type of problem is to first identify what the starting material and the products are. The starting material for A is a secondary alcohol. The product is a secondary chloride. So what does this tell us? It tells us that the action is taking place at the same carbon. So the secondary carbon is being transformed from an alcohol into a chloride. So a one-step method that we learned in the chapter to carry out this transformation is to treat the alcohol with thionyl chloride. So that's SOCl2. So that'll do that transformation in one step. Part B is asking us to take an alkene into a secondary chloride. So we've seen that secondary chloride already in problem A. Now we're starting with a disubstituted alkene. So since we've seen from part A that this secondary alcohol can go to that secondary chloride, the question is now a problem of taking this alkene and transforming it into that secondary alcohol. So this is formally a hydration of an alkene. If you look, we're adding the elements of water, H2O, across that carbon-carbon double bond. If you recall from organic chemistry one, the way we've learned how to do that is hydroboration, oxidation, abbreviated HBO. And recall that the main conditions are going to be treatment with borane, THF complex. That's going to do the hyd hydroboration. The second part of that reaction is the actual oxidation with hydrogen peroxide in the presence of sodium hydroxide. So we do hydroboration to the secondary alcohol and then we can take the secondary alcohol to the secondary chloride. Part C is asking us to take a tri-substituted alkene to make a tertiary bromide. So the bromine is ending up at the most substituted carbon. So again, if you recall from last semester, the hydration of an alkene under acidic conditions, so say water, catalytic amount of sulfuric acid, that's going to hydrate that alkene. So we're proceeding through a tertiary carbocation. Water can then add to that to give you the tertiary alcohol. And then we're going to do SN1 chemistry. So in a second step, we can say treat with hydrogen bromide. That'll protonate the alcohol to regenerate the tertiary carbocation, and then we'll have bromide ion attack that position to end up with the desired product. So that's a two-step process that you can use to affect that transformation. Part D, we're taking the same tri-substituted alkene However, this time we're going to a secondary alcohol. 
So if you look at what we've done overall, we've added the elements of water across that alkene. I've just not shown that hydrogen. So now I've put the hydrogen in and you can see the elements of water. So as opposed to treatment with under acidic conditions as we did in part C, we want the, the alcohol portion to go to the secondary or least substituted um, carbon. So these conditions to affect this transformation are going to be hydroboration oxidation. So hydroboration oxidation again you'll recall is treatment with borane then the second step hydrogen peroxide sodium hydroxide so the first initial part of this you can see the hydrogens adding to the most substituted carbon so you'll recall that that's the the case with borane the least substituted carbon here gets the boron the most substituted carbon gets the hydrogen then the second step transforms the boron to the oxygen using sodium hydroperoxide then in our final problem, part E, we're taking a tertiary bromide, which we've seen from the product of part C already. And we're making a primary alcohol. So you can see that this is not a simple substitution. And it, it, it couldn't be an SN2 case anyway because we have a tertiary carbon, and that's not a good substrate for substitution to begin with in the SN2 fashion. So the other mechanism that we know is elimination. However, it becomes a problem of regiochemistry, and regiochemistry basically means a choice. So let's label the carbon bearing the bromine as the alpha carbon. And then all the adjacent carbons to that are beta carbons. It just so happens that these two beta carbons in the ring are equivalent. So it doesn't matter which, which potential hydrogen we could abstract. But if we look at where the alcohol is in the product it's at the primary position it's not in the ring so we don't want to eliminate from the ring we want to eliminate outside of the ring so if you recall to get the least substituted alkene you're going to treat with a bulky base so the bulky base if you recall is potassium tert butoxide that's going to give this alkene. So we're eliminating outside of the ring to get this alkene. And now we want to put the elements of water across that alkene in this fashion. So to do that, we're going to use hydroboration oxidation again because that's going to put the hydrogen at the most substituted carbon, the boron goes to the least substituted carbon, and then it's transformed into the oxygen using hydrogen peroxide. So first, borane THF, second, hydrogen peroxide, sodium hydroxide.